Welcome to the Luton Quarterly Updates. My name is Cam Sullings and today we're going to have a look at uh, quarters two and three for 2018 and then a look at buying and selling a property. All right, uh, well, let's get to uh, talking sales first up. Um, Craig, how's it been over the last two quarters? Look, we'd always like to be busier, but it's the same every month. So I did check on some statistics with regards to the amount of listings and sales made over the uh, predominantly what are the winter months and transactions, uh, not just at Luton but right across the board, have been consistent um, around 3 or 4% variance over those six months. So we've sort of been averaging around 110 to 120 uh, transactions a month over those six months. And as I said, we'd always like more and I know the agents would always like more, but uh, comparing it to previous years, that's a pretty solid effort, Cam. And, and Justine, are you seeing the same thing on the ground? Mm, definitely. I mean, winter's always a bit quieter in terms of stock levels, which was good to clear it all before springtime. Um, we sold quite consistently. I think auction clearance rates were pretty good over the winter quarter um, as a whole and, and strong in the autumn quarter as well. Probably the, the warm months carried into autumn more so and there was a lot more activity closer to winter this year. Um, so lots happening. Okay. Um, Ethan, in quarter two, uh, you all attended some training events and conferences. Yeah, so a lot of us from Luton Properties headed up to the Gold Coast for the um, Australian Real Estate Convention, uh, which was ARIC up there, and there was a lot of good motivational speakers there and a lot of good information that we could take from that. And, and so what did you take away? What was the one key takeaway for you? I think it's definitely to stay hungry, um, but I think the key things to, to take away was a lot around prospecting and just really getting out there and doing the work and getting on the ground and meeting people and whatnot. Sure. Craig, were you there? No, would you believe, Cam, I wasn't. But I've been to seven in the last eight years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. It was a pretty contentious point with Richard that right, I wasn't okay. there. But no, no, I was actually on holiday. But, but we, so yeah, we, we had 36 agents go there. And I have had a look at a lot of the content that, that was to be presented. And I think Ethan makes a really relevant point. I think, um, I think a lot of agents can get confused around what the industry is actually about. And it's, it's very much a task industry. And, um, there's, a, there's a lot of tasks and some of them are fairly mundane tasks that require a bit of discipline and particularly for someone that's newer to the industry they've really got to uh, adhere to some tasks and have the discipline to turn up each day and do, and do the task. Sure and a, a, as the digital age joins us so do you see things changing? Totally. It's the way real estate is to how it was five years ago, totally different. Mm. And it's exciting. There's so many changes happening and I think, um, I mean, we've really embraced it uh, as a, at Luton as a whole um, and individual teams are really getting strong on it as well and it's just the way of the future. It's the way that we're finding buyers, it's the way we're meeting sellers, it's the way we're prospecting and networking and it's amazing. So let's move to uh, the third quarter and, and, and back to the all important sales. Um, through that period, how did it go? Yeah, once again, it's pretty consistent. So we we tend to like to do you know anywhere between 100 and 125 established house sales per month. We've stayed in that range. Um, you know what 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 I have noticed is, and you know Justine and Tim and the team that they formed at West, and I am noticing that. Um, some of the agents are making a higher percentage of the sales and they tend to be the ones that are embracing the technologies mm -hmm. that you're talking about who are, use, who are managing the relationship with potential se sellers better through our CRM and just using the leverage that some of the social media platforms will give them to grow their business. So there's a real transition happening in the industry with regards agents who are getting on board this sort of technology versus maybe some of the agents that are tending to sort of stick their head in the sand and wish it would all go away, but it's not <laughs> going to go away, Cam. No, it certainly won't. Ethan, how about you? You're bang in the centre of town and we see the construction and the, um, and the, the, the units going in. Has it been busy across that third quarter for you in that space? Oh, most definitely, yeah. Like, like you said, exactly, there's been a lot of developments coming up in the area, um, a lot on the, um, Northbourne Avenue and, and whatnot. And, you know, with the upcoming light rail project, which is be soon into completion, um, that's obviously a good mindset in those um, areas for those apartments and those complexes and whatnot. 
Justine, um, the charity ball, uh, the famous annual Luton yes. charity ball, and uh, this year was the, the neon theme. Yes. Um, I think I said on air on that Saturday, uh, Richard's outfit must have had an extension cord because oh, he just yeah. must have lit up. Um, yes, it, it's a year. wonderful <laughs> fundraiser as well, but tell us about the night. It was fantastic. Um, we got to see Craig sing <laughs> and dance, so it was a highlight. It was a really great night. I think everyone had a really good time. Um, the mood was really good. Huge success as always. E e Ethan, why do you think nights like that are important? For, certainly there's the charity angle, um, but for the organisation as a whole? I just think it's good for morale as well with, you know, Luton itself and, you know, just as a community. You know, it's a fun night for everyone. You know, like Justine did say, it goes to a great cause and whatnot as well. So it's just a fun night all around for everyone. It, it boosts that morale for everyone. Yeah, it certainly looked fantastic on, on social platforms. Um, Craig, tell us a little bit about List Shore. Okay, so List Shore's a new innovation that um, we've introduced to the market here in Canberra. And it, it, it is a Luton branded product which is essentially backed by Macquarie Bank and some partners of theirs where we're in a position to um, offer the advertising and marketing component to our vendors at, uh, at either in sometimes no upfront cost or sometimes maybe 20% of that initial investment. So one of the big, um, one of the big issues the industry's faced in the past is the uh, marketing component that agents are sort of talking to vendors about and the sort of investment they're looking at making and um, more often than not that was a component that was required to be paid up front but through this unique offering we now have an ability to basically um, to basically in a lot of the instances say get a 20% commitment from the vendor and if the property was not to sell during the marketing period, we're then in a position to be able to not have to get any further of those monies from the vendor. So it's basically putting us in a position where we're becoming a partner in the marketing investment. Sure. And if we're not able to get a result that our vendors are absolutely thrilled with, uh, we're then not going back and asking for the balance of the funds that would have been due uh, prior to us introducing this new product. And, and it's working? Yeah, so, so far we've had it in play, Justine, um, I think five or six weeks. Yeah, around about. Yeah, and I was looking at some um, figures last week and about two thirds of our vendors are taking up the opportunity to have us as a partner in that marketing venture. And what we are also seeing too is because of the fact that we're sharing some of the risk that um, our, our vendors are willing to invest more in marketing which is improving their chances uh, of getting a better result and we're able to do a better marketing job and once again if we can't get a result they're happy with they're not having to commit anymore so it's a real win-win uh, proposition which is a unique product that uh, we're we're really glad to be part of all right so there's quarters uh, two and three let's now have a look at uh, buying and selling in the actual process um, Justine we'll come to you first um, the advantages or disadvantages of an open home so got to have open homes <laughs> it's very hard to get buyers to commit love, fall in love want to put an offer on a property or bid at auction if they're not going through the home. So we have to make it as easy as possible for buyers to come along, see it, commit to it, and the easiest way to do that is hold open homes. So in our, in our team we hold for auction campaigns, one on a Saturday, one during the week. We're making the home available to them, we're making it as easy as possible for them to come along. And, and so you balance that up though against um, what's happening with digital and the yes. virtual tours yes. and we're getting the drone flyovers yeah. and you can you can log on and change the colour of your walls and move yes. furniture around. So yeah. how does that marry with that? So, I mean, we do sell quite a few properties to people who literally never come through. They might send family through as representatives, but um, people can buy purely off photos, virtual tours, videos, floor plans, all that sort of thing. But the whole idea is to show them as much as possible so that they decide, yes, I want to go and look at that property on Saturday. I've seen enough of that one, I don't need to go. So it's about getting them, giving them as much as possible so they can make informed decisions. Ethan, um, you're the youngest at the table here, obviously uh, have a very, very good digital take up. Um, mm -hmm. What about your peers when they're buying and selling? Are they using digital? Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, as you'd know, a lot of people these days, everyone has a smartphone, um, and a lot of the you know 
searching for homes and whatnot um, is done all through that smartphone, through these other apps. Craig, we've decided that uh, we're going to sell or buy a property, and especially if you're selling. Um, for you, you've been around for a long time in the real estate business. What are the, very respectfully, <laughs> uh, um, what are some of the tips to improve a, a home's appeal? I think one of the um, first things you need to do is pick the agent that you're going to be working with and get an involvement with them uh, as early as you can in the lead into putting the property on the market. So I know, for instance, someone like Justine or Tim with their experience, if they're able to be talking to you four, five, six weeks mm. before the property is going to go on the market, they're going to be... Even well before that. And even months, well before yeah. that, because yeah. I know with the pipeline you guys yeah. run, you're working with some people that are six months, oh, 12 easily. months away from yep. selling. Because there's definitely, and it does change from property to property, uh, owner to owner, and uh, also the region that you're in, there are definitely some things that are worth doing with regards presenting a property with regards to capital return on the outlay that you're going to make. And there are some things that probably aren't the best thing to do. So my number one piece of advice would be is align yourself with an agent that you're comfortable with and that you trust, has got a great track record, and sit down with them and talk about the sort of things and plan a timeline, get the old task list. I'm a big favourite for some old school stuff like yes. a whiteboard on the fridge, yes. some magnets, work through the jobs, tick them off, get some buy-in from the family. Everyone's got to play a role in getting the house ready, Cam. Justine, um, we hear the term staging um, thrown around yeah. now. Are, are you a fan of staging? Very much so, yeah. Very, very rarely would we sell a property empty if it is a vacant property. Um, occasionally you'll have one that might be totally original and people you need to see it for what it is and you know that's for its potential but probably 95% of the time is if the home is vacant we're putting furniture in and that's to just help people envisage living there the lifestyle on offer it makes it so much easier if, if they're like oh, okay that's where the bed would go great our couch would go there I can imagine entertaining outside in the warmer months at the table that yeah. sort of stuff. Ethan, um, old school selling would have had some fresh bread um, and, the, and the, you know, the aroma of the beautiful bread or, and coffee. Um, are you using staging as, as a younger agent? Oh yeah, most definitely. And I think I wouldn't go as far as putting some fresh bread out. Maybe a candle <laughs> or something, but um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, I think you know, staging is a big benefit for um, sellers. All right, and of course, when it comes time, and it is one of the most stressful um, events of someone's life, is is moving from you know house to house, or you know suburb to suburb, or indeed you know around the country or internationally. Um, what's the number one moving tip for you, Craig? Um, start early. Yeah. yeah. So it's like having moved. I think I've moved four uh, four times myself to these family homes, and you can never start early enough. And some of that. I know Justine would probably agree, can be even before you're getting on the market with the decluttering mm. process. So that's a great opportunity to be moving yes. a lot of stuff. Yes. You know, maybe reclaiming the garage. So, Correct, throw you know, it out, so then you, you don't have to move cars it. cars in the garage, yeah, <laughs> yeah. or buyers could walk yes, out and actually yeah. go into the garage. <laughs> that's so right. The process of moving can start before you actually sell. And, and Justine, for me, I've done a lot of moving around Australia as well. Um, it is going and buying um, proper moving cartons or yes. the proper cardboard boxes. Yep loads of butcher's paper oh, yep. um, and being organised. You must really have is. that list. And yeah. I mean, we're lucky these days you can go online and just Google tips of moving the house oh, and you'll fantastic. get a hundred. So exactly. your organisation surely must be a big yes. one. Yes, oh, definitely. And I mean, you don't want to just throw everything into a box because when you get to the other end and you're exhausted, you then have to take everything out and half the things are broken. And it's about being organised, do it in a methodical way. I love a checklist. Work, do room by room, work yep. out what you don't need for the next three months, pack that up, put it in storage, yep. do whatever you need to do. But yep. yeah, as Craig says, start early. So what should we stay away from in the whole you know, buying and selling process? What are, the, what are the dangers, do you think? It's really good to do research as a buyer before you are ready to buy, um, to see what properties are going for in the area, if there are a lot of people attending the open homes, you know, if there's one registered bidder at auctions or if there's 10, so you get a feel for how much competition there is in the area, how many people are wanting to get in. I mean, you can even sort of study the market trends in the area you want to be in and make decisions based off that. But um, it comes down to when you need to buy. Some people have to buy at a certain time and you just go with, you know, you find a place you love. We always say go hard, yeah. you know, you don't want to miss out. To wrap things up today, um, let's go round the table. What's exciting you about the next quarter leading into other than the nice warmer days? Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so what's really exciting me this week is we're starting 38 new listings, mm. I think with 23 auctions. So we're getting into a great time of the year 
uh, where we're really busy on the weekends. The buyers are going to have the best selection of properties available in the year. That's going to lead to a higher volume of transactions for our sales team, so everyone's going to be happy. So it's just absolutely the best time of the year to be in real estate, Cam. Yeah, yeah great. And how about you, Justine? Just excited about spring in general. I mean, it's been a quieter winter in terms, in terms of stock levels. So even just the mood in the office, it's different. As it starts to get warmer, everyone gets busier. It's just a different feeling and, and we're all really excited for a really strong spring and then a lead up to Christmas yeah. as well. And auction time, Ethan, must be on Saturday mornings when the weather is warmer. and There's more of a, more of a buzz, surely. Oh, most definitely, yeah. The whole environment just changes and the whole atmosphere at auctions will change. Um, you know, weather does play a big role in you know, your attendances and, and things like that, so yeah. All right, well, well thank you so much for joining us. So Craig, Justine and Ethan. Thank you. Thanks, All right, guys. and that is uh, the Luton quarterly update. We hope you can join us next time. Thank you.